what is interfacing? It is an additional layer applied to the inside of your garment or sewing project. And why do we put it there? We put it there for reinforcement, shape, structure, perhaps some stiffness where you need a buttonhole. There are so many different reasons you need to use interfacing in your projects. A few of the most common places you're going to find interfacing in garments is going to be collars, cuffs, button plackets, waistbands, the front of suits. It's going to be anywhere that you need some reinforcement, but it's not that simple. I'm sure you've been standing in the aisle at the fabric store where all that interfacing is, and there are so many different types of interfacing. How do you know which type of interfacing to buy for which project? Well, I'm here to help you. So follow along and let's go over the main types of interfacing and when you should use them. The most common type of interfacing is fusible interfacing. And what the heck is fusible interfacing? Well, on one side of it, there's a bunch of little glue dots. So what you do is you place it on the wrong side of your fabric, you iron it on, and then voila, it sticks to your fabric. No sewing required, so easy. So I have a few different types of fusible interfacing laid out. Over here, we have a lightweight fusible. You'll see those little glue dots here on the back side of it. Right here, we have a heavier weight fusible. So this has a stiffer hand to it. This white one right here is a super heavy fusible woven fabric. So this is basically like a woven cotton fabric with fusible glue on one side. And then this one over here is actually a knit interfacing. So it stretches and then it has glue on the back side of it. And those aren't the only options. There are lots of different weights and types of interfacing. So how do you choose the right one for your project? Well, you wanna choose something that's a comparable weight to the project you're working on. So if you're using a medium weight cotton, you wanna use a medium weight interfacing. If you're sewing with a heavy wool, you're probably gonna to wanna to use a heavier interfacing. So that way it holds up the structure of the fabric. So when working with fusible interfacing, there are definitely some tips and tricks to working with it. So let's go over those so you don't end up with a gluey mess everywhere. If you're enjoying learning all about interfacing, make sure you subscribe to Sewing Anastasia. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. Now let's get back to learning all about interfacing. So the trick to applying fusible interfacing is making sure you're applying it to the wrong side of the fabric and making sure that you're identifying which side of the interfacing has the glue on it. The side with the glue is going to have more of a texture to it, and you're going to place that textured side on the wrong side of the fabric. You also want to make sure that your interfacing is within your project area because you don't want the fusible interfacing hanging off the edge of your project. And that is also why we have down a piece of muslin here to protect our ironing board from the glue on the back of the interfacing. So if you don't have a piece of muslin, any piece of cotton fabric will be just fine. And you're also going to want to take your muslin and put it on top of the interfacing as well. And what this is going to do is protect your iron from the interfacing. So sometimes those little glue dots can pop through the lighter weight interfacings and we don't want to ruin the bottom of our iron. So just some hot steam up and down is going to fuse this to the fabric. So if we pull back our muslin, oopsie, it caught a little bit there. Um, accidents do happen. You'll notice that the interfacing is now stuck to the fabric, making it more durable than the side without the interfacing. So don't forget when you're using fusible interfacing to make sure you have that piece of muslin on your ironing board and one protecting your iron because that glue can get out of hand sometimes. And always make sure that your fusible interfacing is smaller than your project. Next, we're gonna talk about non-fusible interfacing. So this has no glue on it, often called sew-in interfacing because to get it to stick to the inside of your project, you need to sew it around the edge. So this one takes a little bit more work. So you generally see this one in higher end garments. This one also comes in different weights, light, medium, heavy. So make sure you're choosing something appropriate for the weight of your project. I also wanna mention that they also come in two different colors black and white. So make sure you're choosing one that works with your project color. So this here is a lightweight, non-woven, non-fusible interfacing. And you can see that there's no glue on it. So it does look a little different on both sides, but there's no definite texture of the glue dots on it. And then if we move over to this one, this one is a medium weight, non-fusible. So same on both sides. And then this one here is a woven, non-fusible, basically looks like a piece of black cotton, 
but it is a little sturdier than normal. So non-fusible interfacing also comes in the knit, the non-woven, and the woven. So you're probably wondering, when am I gonna use a knit interfacing, a woven, a non-woven, because they come in fusible and non-fusible. Well, you're gonna use your knit interfacing when you have a stretchy fabric so that the interfacing is also stretching with your fabric. Now, the woven and non-woven, you can kind of use them interchangeably, but the main difference is that woven interfacing, A, it costs more, and B, it's higher quality. It is not going to rip like the non-woven one can. So the woven interfacing, whether it's fusible or non-fusible, is the highest quality interfacing that you can buy for your project. But you can also use the non-woven one 99% of the time as long as your fabric's not stretchy. That's when you really wanna make sure you're using that knit one. So now you should know the difference between fusible interfacing, non-fusible interfacing, and the different types that they come in and when you should use them. And those interfacings are gonna get you through most of your garment sewing projects. But there are lots of different types of interfacing for specialty projects. For embroidery, for example, there's cutaway, there's tearaway, there's water soluble. There's so many different weights within those as well. And think about a suit. A suit has got a horsehair canvas in the front of it or crinoline. Crinoline's gonna make a specialty dress pop out all fancy. So there are so many different types of interfacings that create structure and volume and reinforcement for projects. So just make sure you're buying the right one for your project. So those are the basics of interfacing. So hopefully next time you need to buy interfacing for your project, it'll be easier for you this time. If you enjoyed this video today, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what you thought of the interfacing video. Also, what is your go-to interfacing? Leave it down below. Me and everyone else would love to know. Don't forget to subscribe to Sew Anastasia and make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok so that way we can stay connected and creative together. And if you don't know, I teach sewing classes in my design studio here in Chicago, Illinois. So check those out at SewingAnastasia.com. And later this spring, we'll be launching the Sewing Anastasia Sewing Academy online for everyone that doesn't live in Chicago. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.